of God. Pour in. Sir, at the cloak. There they go. Finding ways as Craig at the break and out and on the early lead. Wise Market drives up on the outside. Gorky parks at the rail and two and a half lengths back to Goodbye Pooch. As they go to the clubhouse turn and to the half mile mark, it is now with that lead finding ways by a length and a half. Wise Market second by a length and a quarter. On the inside, it's Gorky Park. On the outside, Goodbye Poot. As they head for the back stretch, the opening quarter, 24 and 1. As they head down the back stretch now, finding ways, nursed along on the lead. In between runners is Wise Market, and up on the outside, Goodbye Putin. Three lengths back is Gorky Park. As they run to the quarter mile mark, it's still finding ways with the lead. Half up, 47 and 1. And finding ways, finds a little more, opens up by a length and a half. From the outside now, goodbye. Putin is second by a head. On the inside, Wise Market third. And down the lane they come. It is finding ways. Finding a little more. But on the outside, here's goodbye Putin. And goodbye Putin is closing in. Goodbye Putin. Goodbye Putin. And finding ways in a picture finish. Wise Market will be third. Gorky Park fourth. Photo side. out. Six in. Threat the post. There they go. Closely bunched. Tap it's choice. Back in overdrive. Far outside. Back to Liberty. As they go under the line. Back in overdrive. Has the lead now by a length. On the inside. Tap it's choice in second. It's Brian's delight in between runners and back to Liberty. Three wide. There's a big break of five now to Magic Road and about six to Union Man. As they head for the backstretch opening quarter in 23 and one. And back in overdrive, takes the field on the backstretch with a lengthened three quarter lead. It's back to Liberty from the far outside at the rail, tap it's choice. Then on the outside is Brian's Delight, trying to make up some ground, Magic Road and the trailer Union Man. Quarter mile from home, the half, 46 and three, and back in overdrive has now extended the lead to two and a half. Back to Liberty, second by two. It's Magic Road now taking third, and tap its choice, and down the lane they come. It is back in overdrive, in the clear by four. Inside of 16th, back in overdrive by five, by six. Back in overdrive to win it. Back to Liberty, second, Magic Road, third. Tap its choice, fourth. There they go. Valuable cowboy from the rail trying to gun for the early lead. Baby Grand is right there. Shotgun riders on the outside. Driller has found a good spot in fourth at the rail. 
early trailer, Tis Vicious. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Valuable Cowboy, Baby Grand. They buy for the early lead. Two and a half lengths back. Now is Shotgun Rider in third. Driller at the rail in fourth. And Tis Vicious, the trailer, five off the lead. Opening quarter, 23 and three. As they head down the back stretch, Shotgun Rider's going to try and take the inside route. Valuable Cowboy floated out Baby Grand. Tis Vicious right there. And Driller, only about three separates the field of five. Quarter mile from home, the half 47 flat. Midway on that final turn. And on the inside, Shotgun Rider, Valuable Cowboy. Now here's Tis Vicious looping up three wide. Driller saving ground. And down the lane they come. It is Shotgun Rider with the lead. Driller at the rail, Tis Vicious and Valuable Cowboy. Shotgun Rider pulls away by two and a half. Shotgun Rider to win it, Tis Vicious second. Driller was third, Valuable Cowboy and Baby Grand. Andy Katie in six in. They're at the post. There they go. Closely bunched Candy Katie, Lasting Light, and Jersey Lily. They all battle for the early lead. From the outside is back zone at the rail. Back by your baby. And Harlan's Angel is the trailer. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And Candy Katie has a short lead. Up on the outside is Lasting Light. Second now by a length and a half. Jersey Lily's at the rail in third. Back zone is fourth. Back by your baby and Harlan's Angel. Opening quarter in a quick 23 and one. They're midway on the back stretch as they approach the three eighths marker. Candy Katie by a neck. Lasting light second by two. Jersey Lily back zone. Harlan's Angel and back by your baby. As they race into the far turn, they went through the half now in 46 and three. On the inside, Candy Katie on the outside, Lasting Light. Jersey Lily's got a good spot in third if she's good enough. And Harlan's Angel as they turn for home. Lasting Light on the outside now with a short lead. And down the lane they come. Lasting Light, Candy Katie, Jersey Lily on the outside. Lasting Light, here's Jersey Lily over the top. Jersey Lily to win it. Lasting Light second, Candy Katie third, Harlan's Angel fourth. Seven in, they're at the post. There they go. Sky Factor, quick at the break, gone to your lily. Lizzie's girl in between runners. Here's a Nami moving in to make a line of four. And at the rail, Valerie Valeski. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Valerie Valeski has the rail and the lead by a head. Lizzie's girl second by a head. On the outside, Sky Factor third, three across the track. Length and a quarterback gets a Nami with a great spot in fourth. Two and a half lengths further back now is Texas Humor in fifth. Then we have Rose of Texas and Walk in the Walk. Opening quarter in 23 and two as they race towards the 5 sixteenths marker. From the rail, Valerie Valeski. 
Lizzie's girl. Now Anami is let loose on the outside. Sky Factor now losing ground. Back to Texas Humor. They're midway on the turn, the half, 47 flat. They're now three across the track again. Valerie Valeski, Lizzie's girl, and Anami, widest of all. And down the lane they come. It is Anami on the outside by a half. Then Lizzie's girl, here comes walking the Walk, closing ground. Walking the Walk has gone by, and walking the Walk will win it. Lizzie's girl second, Anami third, Texas Humor fourth. Regovic, seven in. They're at the post. There they go. Closely bunched, Sir Bregovic in between runners now. Majestic three as they go under the line for the first time. Sir Bregovic has a short lead. Majestic straight. Second by a little over a length. Down on the inside. Quinto Sol gets away in third. On the outside, Stay Fantastic's got a good spot. Then it's back to Family Biz along the rail in fifth. Pay My Way is sixth and four in protocol, the trailer. As they turn for the backstretch opening quarter in 23 and three. As they head down the backstretch now, it is Sir Bragovic with the lead by three quarters of a length. Majestic Street, second by a length. It is Quinto Sol going along in third. Stay fantastic, Pay My Way, Family Biz, and four in protocol. Quarter mile from home, the half. 46 and four, and Sir Bregovic gets away a little, leads it by a length and a half. It is Majestic Street in second. Quinto Soul trying to close ground at the rail, and down the lane they come. Quinto Soul, Sir Bregovic, far outside Majestic Street. Sir Bregovic on the outside Majestic Street. Sir Bregovic, Majestic Street. Sir Bregovic to win it. Majestic Street second, Quinto Soul third, close for fourth. There they go. From the outside, Bunny, CC Sunrise. From the inside, BC Choo Choo. As they go under the line for the first time, it's Bunny with a short lead. Licorice pressing up as well as CC Sunrise. BC Choo Choo's at the rail. Now bearing out into that turn was CC Sunrise. As they go past the half mile marker, from the inside, it is Bunny, Licorice right there on the outside. BC Choo Choo settles into third, followed by Indiana in fourth. Then there's a break of two and a half to Arundel Castle, freestyle. On the outside, it's higher image, three for the back, Ella Meister and CC Sunrise. They went through the opening quarter in 23 and one, quarter mile from home, half, 46 and three. And Bunny now leads it by a little over a length on the outside, Licorice second by three. At the rail, it's Indiana in third. Trying to split runners now is Freestyle. 
and down the lane they come. It's Bunny with the lead. Bunny by three quarters. It's Licorice on the outside. But Bunny now pulls away. And Bunny wins it in the clear by three. Licorice second, Freestyle third, Indiana fourth, and I believe a Rundell Castle will be fifth.
And a pleasant good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Saturday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Track announcer Dan Jukic being joined, as usual, by our paddock host and handicapper, Mike Heads. We're going to preview all seven races on a very hot day outside. Yeah, warm temperatures <laughs> today. Uh, do find some cover. It's uh, post parades likely to be shortened short a bit, now. especially tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow post parades will uh, likely be shortened noticeably. Uh, it's supposed to be even hotter tomorrow. We're supposed to get into the 30s here on the coast. Which is their high 20s, which is uh, sizzle, that's sizzling. Uh, well, we do have the inlet out there for a little, little breeze. breeze. There's yeah. a little breeze kicking up, but still, it's pretty warm out. But seven, as you mentioned, seven races today uh, uh, carry over in the pick five. Pick five. Yeah. But uh, that starts in race number two. All right, let's get right into the car. Track is fast, obviously. Yep. And the opener is a field of five. They're going to go six and a half. They are maidens. First half of the double exactor and triactor wagering. Well, you look at uh, the race, and Showman is. Certainly the horse to beat. Mm -hmm. I didn't go his way, though. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, it's hard to back any of, you know, I, to fall in love with any yeah. any one of these. You know, a lot of them have told you what they are, and, and they've, you know, they've run okay. One, one, one's going to break through with a maiden win. I, I tried the three, De Denaro. De Denaro? Denaro. Okay, I'm going to go Dean Arrow, but Denaro, you're probably bang on is what it is. <laughs> Denaro. Uh, Owned by the Triple Eight Racing Stables and uh, trained by John Snow, just trailed the field throughout uh, in his first run last year. It was in the maiden eight level, drops in there for four. Work, works are very good or decent. Gets apprentice uh, Fraser Abel, who's off to a great start. And uh, big I numbers on John Snow too. If you look uh, below the past performance mm -hmm. line, uh, with John coming back with horses and first starts. Yeah, his form is going well. I mean, he's. Uh, like Prince Kyra run well. He's had three starters already, and all of them hit the board. Like they're running well, and so they're which signals that they're ready. You like to right. pay attention to barns that are ready, and his barn is they're fresh and, and they're doing well. And and Denaro, it, it was just a uh, an, a different option in this race where Showman is probably the obvious choice or the one three day bender. Uh, but they've had a lot of chances, and uh, I thought if Denaro can run a little bit, he might win the race. But if not, Showman's going to win the money. He's been going well for Hall of Famer Harold Barraby and Curry Powell does a lot, all the morning work for Harold, so right. he, he's, he's aboard. And I put three Dave Ender in for third. I went three, four, and one. No love for any one particular horse, mm. but I thought De Niro might be the one that give, give you a little more De Niro, a little <laughs> bit more uh, value uh, other than the top I two. I copycatted you in the first, went three, four, one also. So the opener, we agree in the three, De Niro. On to the second now. This race does kick off that one dollar pick five. If there's no five of fives, the whole pool is carried over. It's a new wager this year, $2,347 in the carryover pool. Exactor try and that pick five wagering field of five. Where'd you go to kick it off? Well, I was pretty impressed with Miss the Hype. I know it wasn't a, a super tough field that day, and uh, she was afforded a pretty easy lead, but I don't see a pile of speed in here anyway. I think Miss the Hype can get a good trip, has the race under her belt. Uh, that Silk, could be the key. Silk Stilettos was my next horse, but Silk Stilettos doesn't have the benefit of a, a race, but uh, has been training well for trainer Craig McPherson. So, uh, but Miss the Hype. Uh, that was a good run. Uh, Amadeo was always traveling well. I know it was just 24 and 3, 48 and 3. It was a right. route, you know, mile 16 type fraction. But uh, the horse did sprint home with plenty in reserve. And she's been uh, competitive with, with, with pricier, or pricier maidens anyway in the past. So I, I don't think this is much of a hill to climb for her. So I like Mr. Hype over Silk Stilettos. Um, I put the uh, four horse, the newcomer Cocorita, in for third. Uh, this one been training at Turf Paradise, you know, obviously was purchased prior, but was claimed, pardon me, for 4500 by the Dreamtime Stable and trainer Greg Benin. So, uh, yeah, good runner-up effort off the claim, and uh, why not? There is a uh, waiver claim, so uh, it's it's an interesting horse as well. This horse, that was a mile, a mile just short enough to six and a half for a Yeah, we should note half. that some of these races are still six, it's some are six yeah, and a half. So like we have a, a couple of six furlong races right. throughout the weekend, but right. uh, this race six and a half. But I think Mr. Hype 
pretty live in here. I went three, one, and four. I went one, three, and four. I'm going to head to the one silk, still silk stilettos. stilettos. Another one, Mike, that uh, trainer Craig went first and has big numbers off the layoff. Yep, and uh, this this great filly, uh, you know, very very good speed, going to be in good position. That's basically what you need going six and a half. All right, race two. Mike's heading to the three. Missed the hype. I'm heading to the one silk stilettos. On to the third now. Exactor try pick three wagering field of five. They're going to go just six furlongs. Climbing price is 16 up to 20. If you're a BC bred, where'd you go in here? Yeah, once again, another competitive race. I think all five fillies and mares have a good shot to win in here. Uh, I ended up on Kay's Kitchen. Uh, obviously, some uh, ailments last year. Her season was cut short after two impressive victories, uh, breezing through her allowance conditions. And uh, But went to the sidelines after that July 10th run. Right. Uh, it's been freshened up. Works are, are decent. That last work, are very good in a minute flat for Kay's Kitchen. Definitely signaling readiness. Emilio Perez will be aboard. But uh, I went Case Kitchen over the two, Amanda, and I, put the, I was between Shammer or Tam Tricky for third. Uh, I think Amanda will run well. And this race is six furlongs, right. too, by the way, and that certainly won't hurt Amanda. Uh, Tam Tricky was interesting, a newcomer. And quite a few of the horses coming from Turf Paradise have done quite well in, in the, in the so opening far. couple of weeks. So uh, the, the uh, winter fitness is paying dividends, although this horse has been off since December, but uh, still has been working well for trainer Larry Grieve in the wind racing stables. So I, I think Case Kitchen is the classiest on paper, and uh, Amanda, if, if Case Kitchen doesn't run a Ray race, then Amanda is next best. Well, I reversed uh, my order there. I went to the two Amanda. She actually took this condition last year as yeah. a non-winner of one. Now she's back in here, this non-three, uh, having won two races. And I'm going to head her way. Yeah, she took a lot of trouble in that race and uh, did manage to win anyway. And uh, she's been working well. Her last two works in 101 and change. But as, as you know, you like her. And, uh, and, and I also mentioned that if Case Kitchen runs her A race, I think she wins. Right. But if she doesn't run her A race or A minus race, if she runs her A minus race, Amanda's got a shot to beat her. Right. And Tam, Tricky, and Shammer aren't that far behind either. They're, they're, they're both, look, you know, Shammer's worked well also. Competitive third race. Mike's heading to the five case kitchen. I'm going to head to the two, Amanda. On to the fourth race now. Field of six in this 12 5. Up to 16 or up to 15. They are all three year olds. This yep. is the, the key in here. There's no older horses in here, no older uh, Colts and Geldings. And we do have one filly in the bottom there. Got a couple fillies, yeah. Stop Philly Fatal and she, she, yeah, and uh, yeah, Stop Shop and Shelly. I went to the three Lucky Force. I think this horse looked pretty good in his debut last year. And, you know, probably would have run higher if, you know, wasn't able to be protected. This horse has worked well this spring. And right. uh, uh, I like, I'm going to try Lucky Forest to defeat uh, the six horse Stop Shop and Shelly. Uh, a little alarming at the drop in class after being, you know, pretty impressive. What Broker Maiden at the special weight level last year and then came back two weeks later to run fifth, only beating right, two okay. lengths to Love yep. Above and Beyond in the, uh, in the debutante. But uh, yeah, shows up for 12 5, but uh, Demi always trains at a, Demi, Dimitri Tabuzzi always trains at a high percentage. And so he figures he's got this filly spotted right. So I got her in the mix and I put the one. Remember the Alamo for the hot Dino Condolino has already had four winners this year and four runner ups. I know. Yeah, they're, they're all running well for Dino and this one's got speed in the rail and that makes him dangerous. And then, once again, this race is only six furlongs. So uh, that'll definitely help remember the Alamo. But there is speed in the race. I think Lucky Forest can take a trip just in behind. And, uh, you know, Philly Fatal's fast. Remember the Alamo's fast. And, uh, you know, Texatonic's got a little speed. So, uh, but Lucky Forest, I think, is the best in here. I agree with you. So in the fourth, we agree on the three Lucky Force. And race four does kick off. That the 20 pick cent four. pick four with a 15% takeout. On to race five now. It is the Breakhouse Bells Allowance. So we're down to field of four. Mike scratched the two. Queen of Attitude. No show wagering. Competitive bunch. Where'd you go? I went to Celerity. I mean, and it is six and a half. It is when we're back to six and a half for the rest of the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, Celerity is. When she gets away from infinite patience, her stablemate, generally she's pretty good. Right. And uh, she finally has no infinite patience in here. But she'll still need to be very good. She's seven years old now, but uh, still earnings. She'll probably go over to the $200,000 mark today. And uh, But she's still going to need to be good to beat her stablemate. Run a little run. Weeby 3 is very, very good, too. Stakes winner last year won the sales stake yeah, really in Edmonton. Good. Uh, once they got, she got past that $16,000 level and mm -hmm. she started moving forward, she was uh, forced to reckon with. No, no, she's got good, decent speed. Uh, she can sit just off the leaders, too. And she's, 
She's a, a quality horse that's been working well, too. She's, Steve's got her looking great. I've seen her in the morning. She's uh, fabulous right now, and she's definitely the horse to beat. And uh, Her and Celerity, uh, there's not much between them. Run Lola Run will need a bit of a pace to run at. Belcara Park might provide that, though. She has a lot of speed. Not too sure what to do with her today. Uh, she's I got left speed. Her out of the top three. I, I know, it's only four horses. We both left her out. <laughs> but uh, she's definitely uh, has the ability to And she be, gets in light. Yeah. Is in 100, was 116. No, 113. 113. Yeah, the, the weight's right, but the apprentice allowance no, is wrong. wrong. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, close out the season, went back in at a sprint with a victory. They tried her going long. You know, you want to make the Oaks when you're a three year old filly, and she, you know, the connections gave her the best shot, and uh, she just really didn't want to go long. And they got her back in sprinting in the fall, and she won very nicely out gaming uh, Pretty Aria and Wanda Lita. Both were, were older horses, and she was a three year old last year. But uh, yeah, she's interesting too. It's it's a good race. Uh, you know, anytime you got horses coming in off big layoffs, uh, that makes it more difficult. It does. But, it uh, does. I went Celerity over WeB three and Run Lola Run. I head to the bottom horse number five. Run Lola Run makes her return here to Hastings after campaigning for most of the year at uh, Century Mile in Edmonton and running into a very hot dance shoes towards the end of the meet. Yeah, you just can't get away from anyone here. She was getting away from infinite patience. Right. So you go there and you still <laughs> run into a horse like Dan Shoes. Got unlucky. There was an inquiry and everything in that race, but he's still unlucky to lose the Red Smith. But uh, she's runs good races out there. She's a nice filly. She'll like the cutback. She won't mind the cutback to six and a half. She's versatile enough, and she's been working well. Antonio Reyes has been aboard for the last two or three works. So, uh, yeah, she's live as well. Good race. That's a good feature race. It's, it's a good quality mare. So we'll see them in the first stakes race in early June. We will. This is All a right. prep for them. Race five. Mike's heading to the one. The rail horse, Celerity. I'm going to head to the five. Run, Lola, run. On to the sixth race now. Field of six. They're going to go six and a half furlongs. They are maidens. Four up to five thousand dollars. The claiming price. First half of the late double exactor. Try and superfect the wagering. I'm going to try the rail horse and he'll hear drill. Baby drill has had the one run so far this uh -huh. year and I think this horse is uh, going to be spotted well in here. Yeah, I got to sit. You know, it was a little wide last time, but it wasn't a fast pace. When you're wide on a slow pace, and it isn't as uh, hurtful as when you're wide on a fast pace. Right. But uh, the fractions were quite comfortable. And Drill Baby Drill had did aim on Miss the Hype, but Miss the Hype's just a better horse. Uh, I've got her uh, third, but I, I, I thought I'd try uh, the five horse Just Misty. I wanted someone different. Uh, I know she's uh, dropping in class, Just Misty, but really never got into it. It didn't show any. Was it was no, no the gate was an year. issue. Well, the gate was an issue. Yeah. She was dwelling at the start. Well, she's got decent works. How she's going to come out of the gate, I have no idea. I wish I could clue you in on that. <laughs> but I know the ability's there for her to win the money, and she'll be a little bit of a price, you know, a far better price than Drill Baby Drill right. or Best One Yet, who are obviously the horses to beat in here. Best One Yet was a good third. Wasn't beaten far by Drill Baby Drill. Had every shot to win it, but uh, did... You know, just ran a good third. Just was a third best that day, but there was only a few feet between the one and the four at the finish line. So there's the whoever gets a little bit better trip will be tough today. But I'm just going to try Just Misty. Silvino Morales is uh, going well, and Craig McPherson, I'm on him twice today. I go. got lucky for us and Just Misty. I hope I don't jinx him. <laughs> but uh, I went five, four, and one in a race that you probably need a few. All right, race six. Mike's heading to the five, Just Misty. I'm going to head to the one, Drill, baby, Drill. One of the seventh and final events. Scratch the one. Lent me 20. Six furlongs is the distance. Exactor tries Superfecta, and we still retain the super high yep. five. I'm going to head to the sixth island living in here. Kieran Kellawan rides for Keith Peterson. Uh, they thought quite highly of this horse last year, and now he takes the big drop in class. Yeah, getting out of those maiden special weight races, uh, obviously it's going to be a lot easier. There's been a, quite a few of them in here, actually. The five, she's bourbon on ice. There's, right. there's a few of them coming out of tough races. I went to the three-star finality, got winter fitness, right. been running in maiden special weight races in Phoenix, dropped in for the 20 uh, and, and didn't fare very well, but uh, got cooked on the head end, I guess was pressuring three wide, the comment says, and uh, tired late. But her works here at Hastings have been okay, but this isn't the toughest field at all, and I think star finality could be, uh, you know, against straight three-year-old fillies here, should be pretty tough. Uh, I, I agree with the Six Island Living, this horse is uh, double, double live in here. You know, dropping in class. Right. First couple of races last year were very good, and uh, you know, kind of tailed off towards the end. But uh, work tab's good for Keith Peterson, and uh, Karen Kellawan does a lot of the morning work for Keith, so he's getting a good shot here. And I, I put the uh, five horse. She's Bourbon on Ice. Goes first time Lasix. Good final prep. 
Watch that dropped, work in too. 118 and change. Uh, it was a better work than it looked like on paper. Fraser was aboard. The source finished very well in that right. one. Source set was ambitiously placed in those first four races last year. And uh, the first race was very good when running fourth behind Stop Shop and Shelley, Time Ticker, and Bunny. But uh, the next three starts were in a stake and then against the boys. Uh, it, she's in against three, straight filly, three-year-old fillies in here with a lot of changes going on. So right. there is something interesting here with She's Bourbon on Ice, so it could be a decent price as well. All right, race seven, we close it out. Mike's heading to the three-star finality. I'm going to head to the six, Island Living. That'll wrap up the Saturday afternoon edition of Hastings Racing Live, presented by BC Racebook. Live racing tomorrow. tomorrow. We're back to our two-day schedule. First yep. race, 2 p.m. Bring an umbrella. Not for the rain, either. Bring an umbrella for the heat and the sun. It's going to be warm tomorrow. Uh, going to be a good day, though. We've got seven races for you. Good card tomorrow. We've got an allowance feature for the boys, yes. uh, headed by Bold Arch. And uh, I think who else is in there? Cascade Billy. Uh, really good, uh, some really quality sprinters uh, going in allowance feature tomorrow, so uh, should be a good day. It certainly should be, and of course the following week it'll be Preakness Day. Yeah, we go Saturday, Monday. Monday. Yeah, we go yeah, Saturday the 20th. Right. Uh, Preakness Day we'll be racing uh, here at Hastings for seven races, and then we won't race on the Sunday a week tomorrow. We will race on the holiday Monday, Victoria Day, with seven thrillers for you that day. So slight alteration. Of course, first post always at 2 o'clock. But still with two days of racing. Yep. All right, as we leave you, here's a complete look at our selections for the Saturday card. Till tomorrow. Good luck, everyone. Have a good day. I'm Larry C. Charan, and he is the older brother. So. I'm Lenny, yeah, I'm the older brother. By how long? Five minutes. <laughs> well, I basically was looking at him ride over here, and I was like, wow, it looks so much nicer on the TV and stuff, so I wanted to come right away, because he started winning, and I was like, man, I want to go ride in Canada. So. That was probably the hardest part of me coming the first year is that I didn't have company but when he came everything just became easier because I had him around and we will do the same thing, we'll train together, we'll run together, you know, we, we talk about the races together, it just, it's a hundred times better with him around. Actually our dad was a jockey as well and from this we always wanted to be a jockey from day one. He showed us the tough part from day one, you know. He said, if you guys could handle this, then you guys could probably do it, you know. I saw them, but I didn't speak to them, you know. Would you would you be interested in like meeting them? Yeah, of course. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. My yeah, girlfriend, yeah. she's a big fan of them, so she said anytime I get a chance to meet them, you know, go meet them, you know. I'm extremely competitive. I don't give him a chance at no time. But when we go home, we're brothers. We get we're really close as brothers. But when it's race time, it's every man for himself. Maybe a case of bear if I beat him, eh? <laughs> we don't. Whatever happens, I, I wish him the best and I want him to do well also. I want to beat him all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes if I'm having a bad day and he wins, I get that energy too, right? And that confidence. So like, we feed off of each other. If he's doing bad, we want to pick up the slack. The confidence rubs off.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hastings. Track condition at present listed as track fast. Special welcome to everyone joining us for our Saturday card. Now please turn to your official programs for this afternoon's corrections and changes. In the first, number two, there goes my hero, is two pounds over. Now please turn to the second. In the second, start of our pick five, the carryover is $2,347. Number two, dancing with Lil, two pounds over. Number five, the sky is the limit, one pound over. Please note the colors on number four, Coco Rita, and the five, the sky is the limit, should read pink with black and yellow hoops. Now please turn to the third. In the third, number three, Indigo Gold is one pound over. In the fourth, start of our pick four, number two, Cillerone is two pounds over. Correct the weight on number four, Philly Fatal, to 115 pounds. Correct the weight on number six, Stop Shoppin' Shelly, to 115 pounds. Now please turn to the fifth. In the fifth. Scratch the two, Queen of Attitude. Number four, Belcara Park. The weight is correct. Please note the apprentice allowance should be seven pounds. Number five, Run Lola Run is two pounds over. There is no show wagering on the fifth. No show wagering on the fifth. Now please turn to the sixth. Race six, number five, Just Misty, is two pounds over. And now please turn to the seventh. Race seven, scratch the one, lent me 20. Number five, she's bourbon on ice, races without blinkers, blinkers off for the five, she's bourbon on ice. Number six, Island Living, three over. Number seven, Little Sister Lee, three over. Those are all the changes and corrections to the present time. At this time, Hastings would like to welcome our Saturday groups. And they include Jesse DeRoche's group, the Tom Brock Memorial, Method Innovation Partners Outing, Mike Theobald Bachelor Stag, Ron Irving Stag, and Sandy Dales Stag. And also a special welcome to the Breakhouse family. Don't forget, live racing continues here tomorrow. First race tomorrow will be 2 p.m. Please note, with the excessive heat currently we have here on the West Coast, post parades will be shortened down. Please make your wagers as early as possible. Thank you for your attention, and good luck.
right. A pleasant good afternoon and welcome to Hastings Racecourse on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. All right, field of five. No, you can't. Kick things off. First half of the Daily Double. Exact to try actor wagering. There we go. There's your audio. It's it's showing on the board. Like, are you hearing um, Mike upstairs? Going out to the TV. All right. Yeah, we just got some issues near the paddock here, but uh, we'll get things fixed up. Field five, kick things off. There's the one. That's three day bender. Look for him to show some speed, the four-year-old son of Lent. Just the one runner-up effort. That was back two years ago. We'll see how he fares today. This isn't the toughest of maiden races, so it's a good opportunity for him to get the job done. Antonio Reyes will ride for Willow Creek Farms. And Steve Henson. Steve will saddle a couple in here. He's got the one and the two. Number two is, there goes my hero. There's a good look at him. Uh, trailed the field pretty much throughout. Was sitting in behind. Uh, you know, the pace wasn't really fast, but still had a good trip in behind them. Didn't run on in the end. Of course, he'll need to be better to win today, but that was against 8,000. I shouldn't say that. If he, he runs a little better than that last race, he's in, in with a shot. This is not the toughest of maiden races, so... Uh, Maybe there goes my hero can get the job done in a second start. Silvino Morales will ride. Three will be De, De Niro. This is the one I ended up landing on. Trailed the field throughout in his lone run last fall. Work tab has been good. He's just something different. I know th the mayor, Rivers Reach, was a very nice mayor. Uh, Jersey Town, of course, ran second in the BC Derby here. He's, he's a quality stallion. I just think there is some upside with this horse. Get a good weight break with Fraser Abley and the Irons. and uh, I'm going to try to narrow. Four will be Showman. The big gray. There's your favorite at four to five. Most of his races in July and August would, would absolutely kill these horses. So he kind of got... Towards the end of the year, got his form kind of went a little s south, but uh, perhaps today he can regain some of that form. Because it wouldn't take a yeoman's performance today to win it. Curry Powell's been on showman. Works are good. 47-1, and one, followed up by a, a 102, then a 103, and then another 102 and 4. So uh, definitely ready for Hall of Famer Harold Barabee, and that's him on the right-hand side. Uh, this Certainly a, a good hope is, is Showman. I, the only reason I tried to beat him is just I knew he would be a, a, a dreadful price. He's currently at 4-5, to five, but is he a 4-5 to five shot? No, but maybe against this field he should be. We'll see. And the 5 will be Becca's boy. 
Harold doesn't have to go far to uh, leg Worked up the, has been the good. rider. Last season was not all that great. Showed some speed in a few of the races, but uh, didn't run on in any of them. Tried them with blinkers, without blinkers. He's got them back on again, it looks. Or maybe those are ear cones. I don't know. if They might not be blinkers. Definitely has a hood on, but they might be just ear cones. But 11-1 to 1 on Becca's boy with Ridge Balgogo. I think they're going to be in the paddock, Mike, until uh, probably about six minutes to post time with the heat we have on today. Horses are set to make their way onto the track uh, for today's first race. Post parades will be shortened due to the heat today. What are we at? 24, but it feels certainly hotter than that. I went 3, 4, and 1 to kick it off. This does uh, kick off your early double as well as exactus and tries. 3, 4, 1 for me in the opener. Horses set for post parade, and it'll be Dan Jukic time here in a minute. Hey, horses on the track at Hastings for the opener. It's a field of five to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the early double exactor and triactor. Wagering post time promptly in six minutes. Here's your field number one three day bender. On by the Willow Creek Farms, the rider Antonio Reyes. Number two, there goes my hero. On by Helen Climbs, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring. The rider, Silvino Morales. Three is De Nero, owned by Triple Eight Racing. The rider, Apprentice Fraser Abley. Number four, Showman, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Harold Barby. The rider, Curry Powell. And number five, Becca's Boy, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Harold Barby. The rider is Ridge Bell Gobin. Five minutes to post time. Just a reminder to our on-track guests here at Hastings, and once again today we do have the downtown east side neighborhood house on hand with us with their 50-50 draw. You can purchase tickets at the white tent located outside the winner's enclosure or watch for the volunteers throughout the grounds.
Let's kick off our Saturday card by going down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan, with the short and post parade here today as the weather is very sunny and warm here. Luckily, there is a little bit of a breeze coming off of the ocean. We have a field of five maidens here to go six and a half furlongs. I'm going to number four, Showman. He did try his last effort last year going long, back to six and a half here today, and has a really nice bottom end of five eights works coming into here. Currently, your even money favorite on the tote board. Number three, Dean Arrow. Only had the one start last year, but I think that that is very helpful for a horse to be able to get that one start under their belt, be able to go through the paddock post parade. Look for an improved effort from him here today. Rounding out my top three is Three Day Bender. A little bit of class relief to start the year off here for him. Jockey Antonio Reyes is looking to get the victory here today. 4-3-1 is how I see the opener. You have four minutes to make your wager. Get them in early and best of luck. Also at this time, just a note to our on-track guests, we have with us today 400 Drums, an Indigenous artist collective dedicated to sharing the stories, language, and art of their people while bringing economic dignity to the cultural keepers and artists. They help Indigenous people reach new markets by harnessing technology and production services. 400 Drums has a variety of items for sale today, including all Indigenous art displayed throughout Hastings. Support 400 Drums by visiting their booth across from the winner's enclosure. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. Loading it now for the open air at Hastings. Three day bender to the inside gate. De Nero goes in. Next one up is Showman. Last two, there goes my hero and Becca's boy. There goes my hero up and in, five in, they're at the post. There they go. Showman from the outside, right on the early lead, moving through is De Nero. And there goes my hero, skimming the rail now is three day bender. They're four across the track and Becca's boy is the early trailer. As they go to the clubhouse turn, three-day bender shows the way now by a little over a length. In between runners now is, there goes my hero, up on the outside is De Nero. It's two lengths back to Showman, sitting in fourth, and about five lengths back to Becca's boy. Opening quarter in 22 and 2. As they head down the back stretch, three-day bender shows the way now by a length and a half. De Nero on the outside, second by a neck. There goes my hero, third by five. Showman in fourth, seven back to Becca's boy. As they race towards the far turn and a quarter to home, the half is 46 and three. And three day bender still with the lead, but there goes De Niro from the outside and from along the inside is, there goes my hero. As they race to the top of the lane now, necks apart on the inside, there goes my hero on the outside, De Niro. It's five lengths back now to three day bender. Deep stretch now. De Niro's on the outside. There goes my heroes on the inside. They're matching strides. They hit the wire. They will be right together. That'll be a head bob. It'll be three. There goes my hero and De Niro. Beck as boy rallies up for third. Photo sign posted. The photo sign is on the board. Please hold all tickets. In the photo number two, there goes my hero, the unofficial winner. Number three, De Niro was second. Five, Becca's boy third. One, three-day bender was fourth. Two, three, five, one, unofficial.
Into the winner's enclosure, the winner, the opener, number two, there goes my hero. He's owned by Helen Climes, Joanne McDonald, and Sharon Pring. Trained by Steve Henson, assisted by Robbie Henson, and the winning rider, Silvino Morales. There goes my hero, a three-year-old gelding by Storm Victory, out of Dash It Darling. For NBC by Elton Gunther. The result is official. The two three two dollar exacta was sixty seven twenty. Two dollar try two three five was four hundred thirty nine dollars and sixty cents. Final running time for the six and one half furlongs, one nineteen and ninety two one hundreds. Race two kicks off our pick five. The carryover is twenty three hundred forty seven dollars. It is a one dollar wager. If there are no tickets with five of five, the whole pool gets carried over. No consolation. Number two, dancing with Lil, two pounds over. Number five, the sky is the limit, one pound over. Colors on the four and five should read pink with black and yellow hoops. 21 minutes to post time at 2.30.
I fixed it. We got to get this fixed. Screw three small in the shitter. Okay, we got her done. Good work. Good work, boys. Was it upstairs or here? No, it was me. Oh. The horses are here in the paddock for race number two here at Hastings. We got our audio problems behind us. Uh, congratulations to Helen Climes, Joanne McDonald, Sharon Brink, trainer Steve Henson. Rider Silvino Morales says, There goes my hero. Scoots up the inside. Pretty exciting stretch duel. I know it was just a maiden $4,000 race. And uh, these horses still put on a great show, too, and they did. As there goes my hero and De Niro, the two and the three were locked in battle. Noses bobbing up and down, heading to the wire. But uh, there goes my hero. Got his nose down in time to win it. Ten to one. In one nineteen and ninety-two one hundreds. Got to feel the five here in race number two. Pick five starts here. Got that carry over. A little over twenty-three hundred bucks. We also have exact and triactor wagering for you here. Eight thousand dollar non two non threes here, or actually non threes going six and a half. Would you look at number one? Here's Silk Stilettos for for owner Don Tedarenko and uh, Craig McPherson. This one's in with a. I got him in for second, or her in for second, but could certainly see her winning the race today. Yeah, I had it her way today. Uh, Craig's got some pretty strong numbers off the big layoffs, and uh, the work pattern pretty good. Craig's got good numbers with everything. You know, some <laughs> years, hey, you win when you got stock, and some years you don't have stock, and uh, some years you do, and you look great, and no one forgets how to train a horse. But uh, just you need those four-legged animals to be talented as well. And uh, he's got some pretty nice horses this year. And uh, Silk Stilettos, I know even though a kind of a bottom-level horse, is still very alive, I think. Probably best suited, best advised to maybe go to the front. I mean, that's probably the... I don't know who else would go. It's not a lot of speed in here other than Dancing with Lil. Miss the Heights really not a speed filly. Cocorita and the Sky's the Limit really aren't speed fillies either. So you get the rail, uh, you probably best best move is probably to go out there. And if she gets to the front, she could be tough to catch. She's carried her speed going a mile and a sixteenth. So uh, there's no reason uh, she can't. Uh, the distance won't be a problem for her. It's just whether someone outruns her. But she's your two-to-one co-favorite. Scott Williams aboard. That's the one. Still stilettos. Two will be dancing with Lil, one of uh, two Edgar Mendoza runners in here. A couple of slow works followed up with a May 6th move and a 101 and 2. That was a good move for the two. You can just see her blue blinkers there. Races last year were decent. Uh, the final maiden score was a hard fought win. You know, final time wasn't great, but uh, she's getting a bit of play at nine to two for the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds and James Redekop. But she did get the job done. That was the key. Sylvia Morales, yes, looking for both halves. There's that carryover: two thousand four hundred, two thousand three hundred and forty-seven bucks. Three will be miss the hype for the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds and Edgar Mendoza. Emmanuel Perez will be aboard this one. Pretty effortless score uh, in a maiden race. Uh, first time out this year, was protected for the four Gs. Didn't hook the toughest field, got the lead through very slow fractions and uh, and ran on, which she should have. And uh, you know, anytime you get 24 and three, 48 and three, you should win going six furlongs. Things are more difficult, but she's up to it. She's a good filly. Uh, she fits nicely here. She's in for the tag of 8,000 and uh, should be the favorite. And she is the co-choice 2-1. to one. Does pay the penalty for winning, though. Packs 124 pounds. Four will be Coco Rita. Can't tell you too much about this one. We've never seen her here at Hastings. Been running in California and then over in Phoenix. Been freshened up. Good final work in 47 flat. Final start was a good runner-up effort at the non-2 $8,500 level in Phoenix in an off-the-grass race. Another gray in here. Ridge Bal Goblin will get the riding assignment for the Dreamtime Stable and trainer Greg Medin. 
Another Greg Benin runner and Dreamtime Stable owned is The Sky is the Limit. Uh, also owned in partnership with Heather Clark and trainer Greg Benin. The Five, uh, The Sky is the Limit. This is the Bay. Looks good here in the paddock. It's a well turned out horse. Claimed at Woodbine. First Decent time on works. the dirt. Yeah, this horse certainly looks the part. Probably the best looking horse in the race. If there was an award to give for best turned out horse, it's the Five, I'll tell you that. Five are the one. Right, there's your field of five. They're all fillies and mares. Going to go six and a half furlongs. Kicking off the pick five. Carry over a little over 2300 bucks. Exact to tries. I went three, one, and four. This is the hype's going to be tough to beat, but uh, I think Silk Stilettos can do it, and so can Cocorita, or even the sky's the limit after looking at her on parade on here in the paddock. So a good little race here in race number two. You get seven minutes to figure it all out. Horses on the track at Hastings for race number two. Field of five, they're going to go six and one half furlongs. Exactor, triactor, and one dollar pick five wagering. The carryover is $2,347. Post time in seven minutes. Here's your field number one, Silk Stilettos, owned by Don Tedarinko, Scott Williams in the saddle. Two, Dancing with Lil, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds and James Redekop, the rider, Silvino Morales. Number three, Miss the Hype, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, Amadeo Perez riding. Number four, Coco Rita, owned by the Dreamtime Stable, the rider, Ridge Balgobin. At number five, the sky is the limit. On by the Dreamtime Stable, Heather Clark and Greg Benin. The rider, Jose Gomez. Five minutes to post time. Once again, just a reminder, on hand with us today, our friends from the downtown east side neighborhood house. They are selling 50-50 tickets. The tickets can be bought at the White Tent, located just outside the winner's enclosure.
Key West Ford remind you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Under a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Loading in now for the second at Hastings. This race kicks off the pick five. Carryover is $2,347. Miss the hype, the first one up. Inside gate, Silk Stilettos. Dancing with Lil, gate two. Now Miss the Hype goes in. Coco Rita. 
And the outside gate, the sky is the limit. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. Closely bunched on the inside, Silk Stilettos missed the hype, now joins the party. In between them is Dancing with Lail, followed by Coco Rita, and the sky is the limit as they go under the line for the first time. Silk Stilettos leads it by a length and a half, missed the hype in second. Moving through now with a three-wide move is Coco Rita, far outside the sky is the limit, and at the rail, the early trailer is Dancing with Lil. As they run past a half mile marker, opening quarter was 23 flat. To the back stretch they go, and Silk Stilettos leads it by a tight length. It is Miss the Hype in second on the outside. The sky is the limit in third. There's a break of two now to Coco Rita, and three and a half back, dancing with Lil. Past the 5 16 they go. Half goes up, 46 and 4, and now a quarter mile from home. And Silk Stilettos increases the lead now to two and a half. Miss the hype second by a length and a half. Coco Rita in third. Then a gap of three to the sky is the limit. As they turn for home, Silk Stilettos now widens by four. In deep stretch now, it's Silk Stilettos running away by five. Battle on for second. Miss the hype and Coco Rita, but Silk Stilettos to win it. Miss the hype second, Coco Rita third. Dancing with Lil and the sky is the limit. On the board, the unofficial winner of race two, number one, Silk Stilettos. Number three, Miss the Hype, second. Number four, Coco Rita, third. And number two, Dancing with Lil, four. One, three, four, two, unofficial. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race two, number one, Silk Stilettos. She's owned by Don Tedarenko, trained by Craig McPherson, assisted by Nicole Rycroft. Winning rider, Scott Williams. Silk Stilettos is a four-year-old filly by Oxbow out of native talent. 
Bred in Kentucky by the Calumet Farm. The result is official. The two dollar exactor one three returned nine dollars and forty cents. Two dollar try was seventeen eighty. Two dollar daily double was sixty seven thirty. Final running time for the six and one half furlongs one seventeen. And 63 one hundredths. Up next, race three. Number three, Indigo Gold is one pound over. This race at six furlongs. Post time, 20 minutes away at 2.40.
horses are here in the paddock for race number three here at Hastings. Got to feel the five, uh, sixteen thousand dollar fillies and mares, non three lifetime. They're going to go six and a half fur or six furlong. Sorry, they're only going six here. Do kick off the early pick three here on races three, four, and five. We also have exacta and a triactor wagering for you here on the third. Hey, you got to be careful when you look at the top of the program. Make sure you see if it's six or six and a half. This will be the last of the six furlongs till the two-year-old races come. Like this weekend will be the last of the six furlong races, I have been told. So everything will be back at the six and a half. Didn't matter what distance they were running in race two, Silk Stilettos was going to win at any distance. Don Tedarenko, Craig McPherson, and Scott Williams, congratulations to that trio. Uh, a no doubt about it winner. Uh, just... Always traveling comfortable on the head end, the great daughter of Oxbow, and just uh, never looked threatened. Uh, quarter pole started to open up, and she was going better than anybody and just continued to draw away. But uh, impressive performance uh, from Silk Stilettos in race number two. Here's the one. This is Tam Tricky. Newcomer here to Hastings. Quite a... A lot of uh, stamps on her passport. Golden Gate, up to Emerald Downs, back down to Phoenix at Turf Paradise. She's been popular at the Claim Box. Does have a little bit of speed. It seems like they're running her between five and six furlongs pretty much every race. Pretty consistent sword, Mike. Uh, he's hit the board in seven of ten tries. Yeah, her last start was when they claimed her, you know, it looks like she had a terrible trip. Looks like she got away poorly and then rushed up four wide. Their leading rider, Harry Hernandez, or Hernandez was in the tack that day. And uh, just obviously nothing went right. Not, she's been given the rest of the year off and been freshened up. Her work tab's been very good. Wouldn't be surprised to see Camille Santo going six furlongs, put this one right near the lead, or on the lead. As we'll take advantage of the inside post. End up getting bottled up if you don't. Ten to one. That's why it shouldn't be ten to one. Oh, it won't be ten to one. I see uh, Win Stables Chris Ziraldi here, so I know he's <laughs> going to be making a little dent in that ten to one. He likes to, not that he's a big better, but he likes to bet on his own horses. And they've been doing good. Number two will be Amanda. Pretty consistent filly. First or second in eight of her ten career starts. Pretty nice. Uh, two wins, though. Six seconds. But closed out 2022 with a nice win at the same level, defeating Indigo Gold and Wide Awake. This race has obviously come up tougher with the newcomer, Tam Tricky, and droppers, uh, Shamra and Case Kitchen in the lineup. So this is a, a lot more difficult for her. But she's a, a try. Not a big filly, but a... a what she lacks in size, she certainly makes up for in, in heart. She won't cheat you, I'll tell you that. If you bet your two bucks on her, she's gonna give her what she she's gonna give you what she's got. Seven to two on Amanda with Silvino Morales. Number three will be Indigo Gold. Good runner up effort to Remarkable Angel and uh, Amanda in her last two starts last fall. Doesn't have a lot of speed. She's going to need to see a speed duel up front to make her a winner anyway. But she could certainly come running on to be in the placings. Good final prep in 47-4. and four. Nice little black letter move. For owner, trainer, breeder, Bruce Edwin. Yeah, he's got it all. Four will be Shamra for the Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra. And trainer Jim Loseth back in action. Great to see him. His daughter's on the head end, Christine. I'm on. But uh, Shamra's obviously the form tailed off after the Hong Kong Jockey Club handicap and the BC Oaks. Those were tough races. She gets back in sprinting where she was very good. She was a stakes winner last year. Work tab, great final prep, and uh, 59 and 1. Aggressively spotted down here for the 16. She races for the 20, being a BC bred. Brian Boudram Singh will get the call. This is a very active Shamra here in the paddock, but she's a controlled active, which is nice. And number five will be Kay's Kitchen. On paper, definitely the best horse in the race. She's getting bet accordingly, four to five. 
Uh, Broker Maiden by eight, defeating Stablemate Quality Command and in a very good time. Came back to beat the boys, Just Jimmy and Valuable Cowboy, and won 17 and one. Fractions were kind to her that day, but still she finished off so well. But something went amiss as she uh, was given the rest of the year off after July. Has come back, uh, good final work in a minute, flat. Amadeo Perez will be aboard. Definitely your horse to beat, but some concern seeing her down here for the 20. We'll see how it all plays out. But, uh, I went 5-2-1, uh, but I've left out Shamra. This is a good little race. There's no real... Uh, no one's out of it in here. One of those races where you could play them all. Good luck here in race number three. The horses on the track at Hastings, race number three, field of five, they're going to go six furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, and pick three, wagering, post time in six minutes. Here's your field number one, Tam Tricky, owned by the Win Racing Stables, the rider, Kamal Santo. Number two is Amanda, owned by Dr. Brian and Carol Anderson, Silvino Morales aboard. Number three, Indy Go Gold, owned by Bruce Unwin, Jose Gomez rides. Four, Shamra, owned by the Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra with Brian Budramsing in the tack. And the five, Case Kitchen, owned by the Todd Mountain Thoroughbreds, the rider is Amadeo Perez. Five minutes to post time.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Less than a minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Starting in now for the third at Hastings. Kicks off our first pick three of the day. Inside gate, Tam Tricky, newcomer to Hastings. Amanda goes in. Next one up is Indy Gogold. Two left to load, Shamra and Kay's Kitchen. Kay's Kitchen to the outside, now waiting on Shamra. Five in, they're at the post. There they go. From the outside, Shamra. From the inside, Tam Tricky. Now joining the party, here's Kay's Kitchen to make a line of three. Three lengths back is Amanda. Three and a half to Indigo Gold. Into the clubhouse turn they go. And from the inside, Tam Tricky has the lead by a nose. Kay's Kitchen second now by three. Shamra third by a length and three quarters. Then Amanda in fourth by four. And Indigo Gold the trailer. The opening quarter, 23 and one. They're midway on the box stretch now, and three furlongs to run. And from the outside, Kay's Kitchen. From the inside, Tam Tricky. It's three and a half lengths back to Shamra. Another three back is Amanda and Indigo Gold. Quarter mile from home, half 46 and two. Kay's Kitchen on the outside now by a neck. Tam Tricky, second by a length. It is Shamra third. Amanda's into the bit now, three off it in fourth. And Indigo Gold. And down the lane they come. Kay's Kitchen under siege. Shamra's on the outside and takes the lead. 
It's Shamra, Amanda far outside, Kay's Kitchen at the rail. It will be Shamra to win it. Kay's Kitchen, I believe, hangs on for second. Amanda third, Indigo Gold fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner of race three, number four, Shamra. There is a photo for second, hold all tickets. Four and a photo. Please note it is a dead heat for second between number two, Amanda, and number five, Kay's Kitchen. It's a dead heat for second, so it's four, two, five in a dead heat. Number three, Indigo Gold, was fourth. There will be multiple exactor and triactor payoffs. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race three, number four, Shamra. She's owned by the Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra. Trained by Jim Loseth, assisted by Sandra Loseth, the winning rider, Brian Budram Singh. Welcome back to the winner's enclosure, trainer, Jim Loseth. Shamra is a four-year-old filly by Lent out of Honey Do Honey. Bred in BC by Sandra Loseth.
The result is official. The 4-2 exact, a $2 price was nineteen forty. The four five exacta was ten seventy. One dollar try four two five. So pardon me, the two dollar price was thirty four sixty. Four five two was sixteen thirty. Final running time, 111 and 77, one hundredths. Race four kicks off our pick four, 20 cent wager, 15% takeout. Number two, Cillerone, two pounds over. Number four, Philly Fatale, correct the weight to 115. Number six, Stop Shopping Shelley, correct the weight to 115. Six furlongs the distance, post time 20 minutes away at 3.30.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number four here at Hastings. This fourth race does kick off the late pick four on races, or the only pick four on races uh, four through seven. Got to feel the six. Uh, 12, five, three-year-olds here going to go six furlongs. Congratulations in race number three. He's back. Jim Loseth. It's a training victory for his Sapphire Stables and Ted Feenstra. And nice ride by Brian Bood Singh after suffering some inconvenience, I would say, going into the first turn. And uh, it didn't matter. This horse just cruised by them and won it very easily. But uh, impressive return to the races for Shamron, the class drop. Easily wins the money in 111.77 seconds. A very fast time. Of course, yep. uh, track oh, lightning fast today. The horse was well meant and well prepared. And you know, it did get the benefit of a good trip. Tam Tricky and Case Kitchen went a little swift, but uh, Shammer had to check out on the first turn, which is maybe the best thing that could have happened. But uh, Shammer easily wins a race a number three. But today's fourth race is now the task at hand with the one, remember, the Alamo. It's got lots of speed. Broke his maiden in wire-to-wire -wire fashion, obviously going three and a half furlongs. You don't come from off the pace very often going three and a half, but... Uh, Came back in the nursery, led through fast fractions, didn't run on. Those are some tough horses he was running with, Legacy Square and C C Cuban Cobra, who was their Alberta champion when he went over to Century Mile on the Canadian Juvenile. He's in a much better spot in here for the 15 grand. Works are conservative, but that April 9th move in 101 and 2 was very good. He has speed, he has the rail, but there is other speed in here. Got a couple fillies that have speed, especially the four horse filly Fatal. This was one race that just gave me, I, I have no idea who's going to win this race. Not that you can have an, you know, I can give you a good, I might get you close, but I, I'm not sure that I'm going to be right in this race, which happens a lot. But uh, remember the Alamo? Picked him third, could easily win. Scott Williams looking for a second winner on the day. Got the one hole today. Scott had silk stilettos. He's got Remember the Alamo. He's got Celerity in the next. He, he's taking the inside route. Yes, passage and it's today. the. Definitely been live. Two will be Cillarone for the Shamrock Racing Stables and Brian Phillips. This one will go first time Lasix. Closed out 2022 with a nice win from off the pace, and that's probably what's going to happen today because he has no early speed. But there is speed in the race. You got Lucky Force, Philly Fatal. Remember the remember the Alamo is pretty fast though. Like he's speed, speed. Like he's 21 and change fast. Whereas Lucky Force was 22 and four fast. Philly Fatal, she's pretty fast too. There's a good look at Cillerone. He is not fast. He's going to be a, a back marker early, but he could make his presence felt late if the front runners get a little tired and get a little silly up front and go too fast. Nice work to, to, uh, there on April 26th at a minute and four fifths. Sylvina Morales will be aboard. Three will be Lucky Force. This is one I like. I've chosen this one. He's got a good work tab. Undefeated. Uh, obviously, just the one win last year. Wasn't a particularly fast time, but. Uh, Still, the horse broke a little slow, rushed up, and ran a good race. Uh, the counter forces are running well. His name, top two-year-old sire at yep. the recent banquet. And Ridge Balgobin will be back aboard. He was aboard for that victory last September, and he's nice work in 101 and a minute and two-fifths out of the gate. This horse is all right. This horse can run. We'll see if he uh, does well today. Five to two favorite. I think he'd be the favorite. I guess he co-favorite, I guess. Number four will be Philly Fatal. Nice score against uh, the boys in his first up run. It was a lot easier. Made an $8,000 raise. Does lose Amadeo Perez, but picks up uh, barn rider Camille Santo. Well, doesn't really lose Amadeo. They've got a little contract now. Camille Santo, and so uh, Amadeo was evicted. <laughs> Three to one on Philly Fatale. The five will be a Textonic. This one's got good positional speed. Mel Snow's horses are running really well this spring. Six will be Stop Shop and Shelly. 
A little cool on the board at 4-1, to one, but this one's taking a significant class drop. Leary Seach around will ride. Another filly in here. A couple of fillies in here, the 4 and the 6. Are the girls taking on the boys? And we'll see how it all plays out. Difficult race. I went 3-6-1, but to be honest, uh, I'm going to cop out a little here and say I got no clue in here. I went 3-6-1. Good luck here. Horses on the track at Hastings. Race number four, field of six to go just six furlongs. Exactor, try, superfecta, and pick four wagering. Post time, seven minutes away. Here's the field number one. Remember the Alamo, owned by the Swift Thoroughbreds, the rider Scott Williams. Two, Cillerone, owned by the Shamrock Racing Stable Limited, Silvino Morales riding. Number three, Lucky Force, owned by Ed Claggett, the jockey, Ridge Balgobin. Number four, Philly Fatale, owned by Wind Racing Stables, Kemal Santo aboard. Five, Tex Tonic, owned by Sandra Corson. The rider is Brian Budramsing. And number six, Stop Shop and Shelley, owned by the MJD Stables. The rider is Leary Cicheran. Six minutes to post time. Hi, right, time for the pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com for Saturday, May the 13th. I've spread pretty deep in this race. One, three, and six with one, five, with one, four, five, with three, six. Mike's keying off the three, Lucky Force. Then he's going three deep in the other three races. One, three, five, one, four, five, and three, five, six. My 20 cent ticket, 720. Mike's 20 cent ticket, 540. That is the pick four here at Hastings, sponsored by Twinspires.com. All right, time to go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. We are just four minutes away from race number four to kick off the pick four wagering. You got to look at Dan and Mike's tickets there. I also like both fillies in here, number four, Philly Fatale, and number six, Stop Shopping Shelly. I did think that she'd be a little more of a long shot play. Currently at five to one is the six, Stop Shopping Shelly. Had a nice maiden win, first out going six furlongs. I do like the outside post as she does settle a little bit off of that early pace, which will be coming from the rail. Remember the Alamo. He had a very nice first effort, breaking sharply, but then got into a little bit of speed duels in his next starts to follow and did have that affect the outcome of the race. Look for an improved effort from him, the rail advantage and the speed in his favor here. And number four, Philly Fatale. She was unfortunate to be a maiden going into that first start of 2023. I do think she's very tough in here. Jockey Kamal Santos does a lot of work with her in the mornings. He knows her well. Look for them to team up to get her back-to-back -back victories on the season. 4-1-6 is how I see race number four. Get your wagers in and best of luck.
Key West Ford remind you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings. And don't forget, live racing does continue here tomorrow at Hastings. First race, 2 p.m. The horses have reached the starting gate.
Loading it now for the fourth at Hastings. Remember the Alamo to the inside gate. Philly Fatal has been loaded. Tex Tonic comes up. Cillerone, gate two. Outside gate will be Stop, Shop, and Shelley. Cillerone now in. Lucky Force comes up. Still our own fractious in the gate. Lucky Force now goes in, waiting on Stop Shop and Shelley. Six in, uh, they're at the post. There they go. Closely bunched. It's Philly Fatale up for an early lead. Lucky Force right there. Remember the Alamo driving through at the rail. Three and a half lengths back. Textonic and three more. Cillerone and Stop Shop and Shelley. Into the clubhouse turn they go. Remember the Alamo from the rail. Lucky Force on the outside. Two and a half lengths back. Philly Fatale goes along in third. Big break of five now to Stop Shop and Shelley. Cillerone and Textonic. Opening quarter in 23 and 1. They're midway in the back stretch and now three furlongs from home. And it's Lucky Force out there with a two and a half length lead. Remember the Alamo second by a length. Moving up on the outside is Philly Fatale. Three and a half lengths back. Cillerone, Stop Shop and Shelley and Textonic. Half 46 and 1. Three sixteenths from home and Lucky Force has drawn away in the field by about six. Philly Fatal trying to hold second, and down the lane they come. Lucky Force is well in command. Philly Fatal battling out with Cillerone for second. But no doubt about it, Lucky Force will win it in the clear, wrapped up. Philly Fatal second. It'll be Cillerone third. I think it's Textonic fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number three, Lucky Force. Number four, Philly Fatal, second. Two, Cillerone, third. And the five, Textonic, fourth. Three, four, two, five, on the board.
Back to the winner's enclosure, the winner of race four, number three, Lucky Force. He's owned by Ed Claggett, trained by Craig McPherson, assisted by Nicole Rycroft, the winning rider, Ridge Balgobin. Lucky Force is a three-year-old gelding by Counterforce out of Checkpoint. Bred in BC by Dustin Bud Downing. The result is official. Three four exact, a two dollar price, fifty nine eighty. Dollar try, three four two one eighty seven twenty. Twenty cent super, three four two five eighty three eighty. Final running time for the six furlongs, 111 and 26 one hundredths. In the fifth, the Brickhouse Bell's allowance, scratch the two, Queen of Attitude. Number four, Bell Cara Park, please note the apprentice allowance should be seven pounds. The weight is correct at 113. Number five, Run Lola Run, two pounds over, no show wagering. Post time, 19 minutes away at four o'clock.
And welcome back to the paddock here at Hastings. It's time for race number five. This is our feature on the day. It's a nice allowance event for fillies and mares. These are our top class stakes mares. And the Brig House Bells allowance purse. This is a prep for the first stakes race to be run in early June. Been reduced to a field of four with a scratch of Queen of Attitude, but four very capable and classy fillies and mares to go six and a half furlongs. Kicking off your late pick three, we also have Exacta and a Triactor wagering for you. And no show. Well, we've seen some blowout performances today, and Lucky Force turned in another one. Craig's had his barn ready to roll. Yes, Craig's winning by 100 lengths today. Mm -hmm. Silk Stiletto's winning by a pile of them. And Egg Claggett. Lucky Force to win very easily with Ridge Bell going up. Making short work of the group of three-year-olds. Congratulations to the connections. Nice little 7-2 to two mutual. Defeating Philly Fatale, who ran another good race. Philly had to go against the boys, but still she ran a race. And Cillerone showed some en encouraging debut this year for, for Cillerone as he came from well off the pace to uh, get the show spot. But Lucky Force, well behind Lucky. Lucky Force just crushed him. All right, here's the one. This is Solarity. He's a cool mare. She's un unfortunate to have to run against horses like Dance Shoes and Infinite Patience throughout her career. Just unlucky. But she still managed to bank just under $200,000 and... Uh, Earning it the hard way. A lot of seconds. But she did have a stakes win in the Emerald Downs last year on June the 4th. Defeating her stablemate mate Cha-Ching and Heidi. She's pretty versatile. Uh, in this race of four, I don't know what the game plan will be. I mean, she's got to show some speed. I know Belcara Park's pretty fast and Weeby 3 has some speed. It, uh, Celerity's generally pretty, when sprinting, uh, pretty close to the pace. But we'll see how it all plays out. It's kind of got to make her comfortable and get her to finish strong, and that's kind of uh, how she runs. But uh, She's ran some winning races, but unfortunately, uh, Dirty Infinite Patience has been around making her finish second. Scott Williams aboard. Three will be Weeby Three. I wonder if that's an omen. Lone Wind came in a, s a restricted sales stake in Alberta last year. She crushed him going seven eighths. She ran a big race last year in the in the Monash. She uh, she actually clipped heels that day. Only a beat a length and a quarter. At Infinite patience and celerity. She's a nice solid sprinter. She can route too. She's certainly not one dimensional. Amadeo will be aboard. She too had the infinite patience blues last year. Without infinite patience in here, uh, it's certainly a competitive and uh, far more competitive betting race, as well as uh, yeah, currently sitting at seven to two as we be three. Four will be Belcara Park. Dropped into a 16 non three last time and got the job done. That was in October of last year, getting out of those stakes races. When she's left alone on the head end, she's pretty tough. She's a good sprinter. They try to stretch her out as, you, as any three year old filly you try and do because that's where the money is in the BC Oaks and the, you know, all the stakes races are going along at the end of the year. And, but she just didn't seem to fancy going long, even when she got easy fractions. She was just not. A distance horse, but I think you're going to keep her around two turns here at Hastings, and uh, certainly looks good here in the paddock. Trainer Mark Cloutier on the head end for owner George Gilbert, six to five favorite. Kind of surprised to see that, but it's early in the way. Drink Fraser Abley will ride at 113 pounds. Well, she's running up the field to be big number five. This run, little to run. She's a big daughter of Tapazar. Would like to see a speed duel in front of her. She doesn't have the kind of speed she doesn't possess. She'll probably be last early. She does not have the kind of speed that the others possess in here. As you see Antonio Reyes getting a leg up. It's a long ways up. Good final work at 59 and 4. Just another one that can win. It's, I hate to be repetitive, but there's some races today that are really difficult. And they're only four and f like f it's a four-horse field. I still have trouble... Narrowing it pinpointing down? Pinpointing, no, pinpointing <laughs> the winner, not narrowing, pinpointing the winner. Like, it's hard. All four of these mares can win. 
pick which one you like and better. Just I got no uh, solid pick in this race at all. They're just good competitive mares. Once again, scratch the two. Queen of Attitude down to field the four. Going six and a half furlongs, kicking off your late pick three exactors and tries as well. But we do lose the show. Show wagers have to sit this dash out. But this is the Brig House Bells, one of our longest standing races here at Hastings. They said the Brig House from some of the Brig House family out today. And uh, they'll be decorating the winner. Seven minutes to post. Let's send it up to Dan. Horses on the track at Hastings for race number five. This is the Big House Bells allowance feature. Field of four, scratch the two. No show wagering, exactor try and pick three wagering. Post time, six minutes away. Here's the field number one celebrity owned by Mr. and Mrs. R.J. Bennett, Scott Williams in the tack. Number three, we be three owned by the Willow Creek Farms, the rider Amadeo Perez. Number four, Belcara Park. In the colors of George Gilbert, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. And number five, Run Lola Run, owned by George and Donna Gilbert, Larry Patosny, and Maria Goddard. The jockey, Antonio Reyes. Five minutes to post time. All right, once again, let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. Just five minutes away from race number five. It's only a field of four, but an exciting field ahead of us here. I went to number three, We Be Three. This horse showed great speed figures when she went to Century Mile late last year. I think if she's able to sit in behind Belcara Park today, she'll be the one that's able to go all the way. Belcara Park is jumping up last year as a three-year-old, this year four-year-old running against that open company. This will be a true test to see uh, her ability. She has one style and that's to go to the front and see how long she can hold it. She does have the apprentice weight allowance of seven pounds to hopefully help carry her a little further today. And number one celerity, this mare is super honest, had a great 2022 season, was unfortunate to only get the one win, but that was running against infinite patience all year. Her and Weeby three were back and forth, second and third all of last year. Looking to get the win here today for either one of those mares. I went 3-1-4 here in race number five. The late pick three starts here. Best of luck.
Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute. The horses have reached the starting gate. Right again now for the fifth at Hastings, a Breakhouse Bells allowance purse. Weeby three goes in. Celerity to the inside gate. Run Lola run to the outside. Last of four, Belcara Park. Four in, they're at the post. We be three fractious in the gate. There they go. Field of four, Phillies and Mayor sent on the way. In the Brickhouse Bells allowance purse. Bell Kara Park strikes the front first, opens up a three-length lead. 
On the outside is Run Lola Run, Celerity's at the rail, and We Be Three is the early trailer. Valcara Park has run away into the clubhouse turn and opens up by five. Into the clubhouse turn they go, and Valcara Park is out there by five. Celerity's at the rail. On the outside is Run Lola Run, and We Be Three is the early trailer. Over the quarter, a rapid 21 and four as they race down the back stretch. Valcara Park now only by two. Celerity on the inside, on the outside run, Lola run. Weeby three is the trailer. She's only four off the lead. Into the far turn they go, the half, 45 and two. Belcara Park, Celerity, run, Lola run on the outside. Weeby three needs a way through. They're midway on the final turn. Celerity with the lead. Belcara Park, Weeby three, and run, Lola run. As a turn for home, Celerity with the lead. We be three right there at her throat. Run Lola Run and Belcara Park. It's We Be Three with the lead. We be three wins it by two. Celerity second, Run Lola Run third, and Belcara Park fourth. On the board, the unofficial winner, number three, We Be Three. Number one, Celerity, second. Number five, Run Lola Run, third. And number four, Belcara Park, fourth. Three, one, five, four. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race five, the Brickhouse Bells Allowance, number three, Weeby Three. Owned by the Willow Creek Farms, trained by Steve Henson, assisted by Robbie Henson, winning riders Amadeo Perez. Weeby Three is a five-year-old mare by TD out of Lost Humor, Red NBC by Oli Nielsen. Please welcome to the winner's enclosure members of the Brickhouse family, who have long-standing roots in the thoroughbred industry in B.C.
The two dollar exactor was eleven ninety. The two dollar try seventeen sixty. The one dollar pick three, three of three needed, one hundred sixteen dollars and ninety cents. Final running time for the six and one half furlongs, one seventeen and four one hundreds. Race six, number five, just misty, is two pounds over. Post time, twenty minutes away at four thirty.
here in the paddock. Time for race number six here at Hastings. The sixth race does kick off your late daily double. Try and get the uh, feedback done here. Hang on. Blow your ears out. Exact tries and supers as well as the late daily double field of six going six and a half. Well, a good run from Weeby 3 in race number 5. The Breakhouse Bells Allowance Purse. Congratulations to Emmadale Perez of Willow Creek Farm. Steve Henson gets a training double. As Weeby 3 was well prepared to get the job done. And 117 flat. Good time, too. Was held back in reserve. And that was the place to be, was last. All right, here's the one. This is Drill, Baby Drill. Your current favorite at two to one. I don't mind the horse. The horse can win. Had every shot last time. Ran second to miss the height. Half a length ahead of best one yet. Those two won't be far apart. It's a coin toss between the one and the four as to who's better. Brian Boudram Singh looking for his second winner today and a nice winner earlier. With Shamra. But to drill, baby, drill. Doesn't have a lot of speed, so the rail probably isn't the best spot for her. But we'll see how it plays out. She had a good trip on the outside in that four horse field. It seemed to be better for her. When she gets down on the inside, sometimes she can get shuffled back and. But definitely one of the horses to beat is the one, Drill Baby Drill. She's a 13-time maiden, so don't get too high on her. She does have six seconds and two-thirds, but uh, still. Anytime you have a horse that's had that many chances, it's tough to take really short prices on them. Currently at two to one is uh, Drill Baby Drill. Number two will be Okanagan Gold. Goes blinkers off today. Lots of cha changes. Goes first-time Lasix as well. Work tab's been decent. Last work in 48 and 2 was a good one. Didn't show us much last year at all. This one was been a trainer change since last season. Certainly looks well turned out here by Charlene Miller for the double K thoroughbred stables. Get some play too, four to one. Not the toughest maiden race to jump into, so uh Karen Kellowan will ride, that's the two, Okanagan Gold. Three will be Classy Legacy. Well beaten, both of his start, her starts uh, last year. Work tab's been decent, but uh, obviously she's going to need to improve. Big price at eight to one, she's the longest shot on the board in this field of six. Antonio Reyes will ride. Four will be best one yet. I like this horse today. I think this horse will run a good race. I didn't pick him to win it, but I, I have him in the second spot. But uh, I think Fraser Abley can get this horse to sit pretty close to the pace. I thought it was a really good first up run. The Barnes looking for the third winner on the day, and why not? Let's get it here with uh, best one yet. I did land on another one, another trainer going for his third winner today. The five horse, Just Misty, Fred Claggett, Craig McPherson. Just Misty and Foster Armstrong, old army. Silvino Morales rides. Yeah, final work in a minute flat. That's a good one. That's as good. That's brilliant for these this caliber. Any horse that can work in a minute. Well, the betting board certainly shows the competitiveness of the field. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, two to one favorite and eight to one longest shot on the board. Anytime you got that, that's. Uh, but there's a good look at the five. Just missed the. Uh, I like this horse. I'm going to take a shot on it. It's not a tough maiden race. Last two works have signaled to me that this horse has got some run. Uh, showed absolutely nothing last year. Dwelt at the gate. That'll be the whole issue with this horse, whether it can come out of the starting gate. In order to win, you got to come out of the gate. So uh, this horse that did have some issues last year, and hopefully they're behind him. Or her, pardon me. 
She's a half sister to another sunny day who's very good and very quick. We'll see if she can uh, live up to her older sister who's won quite a few races. Silvino Morales will try and give Craig McPherson his third winner on the day. And number six will be better with time uh, for trainer Riley Noble, owner trainer Riley Noble. Purchased this one privately at the end of September, had the one run last year. Good final work in 101 flat. Scott Williams will, will be aboard. And yes, I did ask. This is a horse that was bred in the Yukon. <laughs> yep. Bred in the Yukon. YT, Yukon Territories. There's a whole story behind that, there how is. the mare ended up being <laughs> shipped up there and then didn't know she was in foal or something like that, ended up foaling there and then bringing the foal. It's a whole, there's quite a story behind this. Yes, filler. there is. Yeah. But she needs to improve off her last year's form as a three-year-old. But she's got nice works, 48, a couple of 48s, so a 101. It's not bad. Currently getting a little bit of play at six to one. I went five, four, and one in here. I, I kind of think those are your three horses. But once again, these are not our most reliable and consistent type of performers. Be a little leery, but uh, good luck whichever way you guys go with in this one. I went five, four, one as I mentioned. All right, the horses are stepping onto the track now for race number six. First half of your late deadly double, exactest tries, supers, win place, show, whatever you want to bet on, you can do it here in race number six. Let's send it up to Dan for the post braid. Horses on the track at Hastings. Race number six. Field of six are going to go six and one half furlongs. First half of the late double exactor try and superfecta wagering. Post time in seven minutes. Here's the field, number one, Drill, Baby Drill, owned by Don Danard and Mel Snow, the rider, Brian Boudramsing. Number two, Okanagan Gold, owned by Double K Thoroughbred Stable, the rider, Kiron Kelawan. Three, Classy Legacy, owned by the Rocking Barbie Outfit, Antonio Reyes Rides. Number four, Best One Yet, owned by the Willow Creek Farms, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Five, Just Misty, Owned by Ed Claggett, Craig McPherson, and Foster Armstrong. The rider is Silvino Morales. And number six, Better With Time. Owned by Riley Noble, the rider is Scott Williams. Five minutes to post time. Hastings is pleased to have with us today the downtown east side neighborhood for their 50-50 draw. Let's go down to the paddock and see who the winning, what the winning number is, and we'll turn it over to Bailey. Thank you, Dan. I am joined by Sophie from the downtown east side neighborhood house. She's going to draw the winning ticket out. I'm going to read the numbers out to you twice, and you have until 5.15 to pick up your prize, and the winner gets $540 today. 
What's our winning number here, Sophie? <laughs> the winning number is two three three five five eight one four. Again, that's two three three five five eight one four. You have until five fifteen to pick up your prize. Good luck to the winner. There's a look at your 50-50 draw on the TV monitors. It's 233 $540. And the downtown east side neighborhood house thanks everyone for supporting their 50-50 draw. Please claim your prize by 515 at the tent located just outside the winner's enclosure. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings. Under a minute to post time at Hastings, less than a minute.
The horses have reached the starting gate. And loading in now for the sixth at Hastings. Drill, baby, drill to the inside gate. Next one up is Just Misty. Drill, baby, drill to the inside. Best one yet to gate four. Best one yet, currently your second choice at five to two. Next one up is Okanagan Gold. Followed by Classy Legacy. Class A Legacy now goes in and waiting on better with time. Better with time goes in, six in, they're at the post. There they go. Just Misty has bolted to the inside part of the racetrack. Through the stretch for the first time from the outside. Better with time now grabs the lead. It's better with time now by two. It's Okanagan Golden second. Here's Just Misty now ranging up on the outside. Drill Baby Drill is in the fourth. As they go to the turn, Classy Legacy and the trailer, best one yet. Into the clubhouse turn they go, opening quarter, 23 and one. And it is better with time, showing the way by a length and a half. Just Misty a second by two and a half. It is Okanagan Golden third. Drill, baby drill, fourth about five off the lead. Two and a half lengths back. Classy Legacy trailer, best one yet. As they head past the 516 Sparker, the half, 47 and two. And Just Misty has now grabbed the lead. Just Misty by a length and a half. It is better with time, second by a length. Drill, baby drill, has worked her way into third. Two and a half lengths back, Okanagan Gold. As they turn for home, Just Misty has the lead, and down the lane they come. Just Misty by two and a half. Drill, baby drill, better with time. Deep stretch now, Just Misty, and drill, baby drill, Just Misty to win it. Drill, baby drill, second, better with time, third. Okanagan Gold, fourth, fifth will be better, best one yet. The unofficial winner, number five, just Misty. Second, number one, drill, baby, drill. Third, and number six, better with time. Fourth, number two, Okanagan Gold, 5162.
Once again, we're still looking for our 50-50 winner. That winning ticket is 233-55814. Please claim your prize immediately at the white tent located at the winner's enclosure. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race six, number five, Just Misty. She's owned by Ed Claggett, Craig McPherson, and Foster Armstrong. Trained by Craig McPherson, assisted by Nicole Rycroft. Winning rider, Silvino Morales. For trainer, Craig McPherson, three training wins on today's card. Just Misty is a three-year-old filly by Bakken out of Mystical Molly. Bred in BC by Elton Gunther. The result is official. Five one exact, a two dollar price, seventeen ninety. Two dollar try, five one six was eighty four ten. Twenty cent super, twenty two dollars, twenty four cents. And the pick five, five of five needed. It does pay out today of one thousand. $55.95. Final running time for the six and one half furlongs, 119 and 94, one hundredths. Seventh and final event, scratch the one, lent me 20. Number five, she's bourbon on ice, blinkers off. Six, Island Living, three over. Seven, Little Sister Lee is three over. Distance is six furlongs. Most time, 19 minutes away at five o'clock.
All right, we're back here in the paddock. Time for race number seven here at Hastings. Our last live race of the day. Don't forget, we're doing it all over again tomorrow. We got seven races on Sunday. Good feature event, another allowance race. It'll be for the boys tomorrow. The older, our best uh, older horses on the grounds, headed by Cascade Billy Bold Arch. There's a pile of them in there. It's a good field. Uh, going six and a half furlongs. Soaring for the sun, uh, stakes, a lot of stakes winners in this race. Yeah, and I believe tomorrow. that race will be the Johnson family purse, too. Yes. To field the six to close it out. We've scratched the one. Lent me 20. Going six furlongs here. We're going to back it up again. I'll be glad to get rid of this six <laughs> furlongs. <I tell laughs> you got to check the front of I think program. everyone knows my position on six furlongs. I hate to drag on about it, but... But a good run from, <laughs> great day for Craig McPherson. Holy cow, that's awesome. Three wins for Craig. Had Claggett, uh, he had two winners. He did. Craig and uh, Army, uh, Foster Armstrong, uh, the co-owners of Just Misty. Sylvina Morales got a double there. So if you're writing the trouble lines for the winner, you'd have a lot of ink. Well, broke slow, ducked in, leaving the gate. Well, there's no one beside him. So when he breaks slow, you, you're, look, you're not having a horse there to straighten you out and he ducked in severely leaving the gate and probably cost him five or six lengths it didn't matter or no. her it didn't matter she was so much the best in that maiden four grander but she it was by an adventure. a mile anyway but it was an adventure yes it was but he, uh, Silvino got her quickly in position though she was in a perfect you know sitting in the two path behind better with time you know there's no pace on and kind of an ideal trip like once he was able to weave his way through the field after the tardy beginning. It was pretty much an uneventful trip, and she was allowed to show her stuff, and she ran like she worked, and she worked in a minute flat, her final prep, and uh, which is better than those horses. She's just better, even though she did make a mistake at the gate. And you can get away with mistakes in maiden races, but uh, she's going to have to stop that when you run against tougher horses when you get those non-twos and non-threes. For sure. Right, number two will be Stolo Spirit. Let's get to the task at hand here. Uh, well beaten in both of her starts last year, but those are at maiden 50s. She's down here for the 15, or 12-5, but uh, races for 15 being a BC bred. Nothing fancy in the work tab, but John doesn't really work his horses super fast. So wouldn't be surprised to see this horse be a little liver than his works indicate. Ridge Balgoman looking for a riding double. He had a nice winner earlier today. Uh, currently sitting at 7-1. to one. That's Stolo Spirit. Number three is Star Finality. That's my top pick in here. Uh, has a winter fitness edge. Been running in Phoenix. And already has five starts this year. Running against horses that uh, the whole field hasn't run this year. That's a big edge. She has some speed. Last two starts were not great when the blinkers were added, but they continue to put the blinkers on. Works since coming back to Hastings are okay. It's just a smallish daughter of uh, finality. But once again, a, lot, a little easier. And winter, you know, winter fitness. This horse has got his fit. It's ready to go and might be the difference in here. Five to two on star finality with Scott Williams for Patty Laney. Four is Princess Hannah, first of her Mel Snow. His horses are running well this spring. Goes first time Lasix for her debut. Once again, I haven't really tipped the four horse. We need the four, James. There we are. He hasn't really tipped her hand in the mornings as to how, how much her ability is. We should have a good race mare, dearest princess, who was placed in the Oaks. Number f five is She's Bourbon on Ice. I don't mind this one at all. Goes first time Lasix. Blinkers are off for her debut this year. Uh, this horse ran against some tough horses last season. Fraser ably rides, so a good break in the weights. Six is uh, Island Living. Another one dropping in class. This one's first two rate starts last year were very good. And number seven is Little Sister Lee, who's got a lot of speed, but not a lot of stamina as of yet. Hopefully she's better this year than she was last. Amadeo Perez will ride. I went five, four, and one. That's the way I kind of saw it here. In uh, the f or Actually, I went... Oh, no, those wrong. are all wrong. Those are wrong, <laughs> those yeah. Those are no. all wrong. I went three, six, and five. That's what I went. Three, six, five to close it out. Once again, we're running tomorrow, 2 o'clock, first post. Bring an umbrella, a hat, but it's gonna, we're going to be running seven good races tomorrow. It's going to be a little warm, but come on out. I'll send it up to Dan for the post spread race seven.
Okay, horses on the track at Hastings for race number seven. Scratch the one. Field of six now to go just six furlongs. Exactor, Triactor, Superfecta, and 20 cents. Super high five wagering. Post time in seven minutes. Here's your field number two, Stolo Spirit. Owned by the LNS Farms Limited, the rider Ridge Balgobin. Number three, Star Finality, owned by Joe Russo and Gloria Russo, with Scott Williams. Four, Princess Hannah, owned by Don Denard and Sue Denard, the rider Brian Boudramsing. Number five, She's Bourbon on Ice, owned by Harry Holden and Ashley Martin, the rider's apprentice, Fraser Abley. Six, Island Living, owned by Randy Lane and Roy Nelson, the rider Kieran Kellawan. And number seven, Little Sister Lee, owned by Roy and Dixie Jacobson, the rider Amadeo Perez. Five minutes to post time. Don't forget, live racing does continue here tomorrow. Seven races. First race tomorrow will be 2 p.m. And for the final time today, let's go down to the paddock and Bailey Williams. Thank you, Dan. We are four minutes away from the finale here at Hastings. A field of six to go, six furlongs. I went to the winter racing fit horse in here, and that's a three-star finality. Have a little bit of class relief coming into this race here from her six starts at Turf Paradise throughout the winter meet there. She ran game efforts all throughout, but was just getting out finished. Look for her to have a good effort here today. Number seven, Little Sister Lee. This horse has really matured from a two to three year old. Looks really nice here in the paddock and relaxed. She used to get pretty warm last year going out there. This should help save a little bit more for her race today. And number five, She's Bourbon on Ice. Had a very nice debut effort last year. Made a nice run down on the rail. She got moved up, ran in some state company. Couldn't quite compete there. I think she's back into the level where she will be quite successful. She is a small filly, so to have the apprentice weight allowance should be in her benefit. I went 375 for the finale. You have three minutes to make your wagers. Make sure to join us tomorrow for the first race, 2 p.m. Best of luck. Key West Ford reminds you there are just two minutes left to place your wagers at Hastings.
Under a minute to post time at Hastings. Under a minute. Once again, for our on-track guests here today, we're still looking for our 50-50 winner. That number, once again, 233-55814. It's worth $540. You have until 515 to claim your prize. There is not another redraw. So once again, 233-55814. Claim your prize at the White Tent at the winner's enclosure. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Starting in now for the nightcap, seventh and final event as we close out our Saturday card. First one up, the outside horse, Little Sister Lee. Next one up, she's Bourbon on Ice. Stolo Spirit comes forward. Next one up will be Star Finality, your 9 to 5 favorite. First time starter, Princess Hannah. Last of six will be Island Living. Six in, they're at the post. There they go. From the outside, Little Sister Lee shoots right out for the early lead and opens up by two and a half. Island Living on the outside, second by a head. She's Bourbon on Ice at the rail in third. Then there's two and a half lengths back to Princess Hannah. On the outside, Star Finality, trailer Stolo Spirit. Into the clubhouse turn they goes ahead to the half mile marker. And it is with the lead, Little Sister Lee to the back stretch by a length and a half. Island Living second by a tight length. Down on the inside, she's Bourbon on Ice. Two lengths further back now is Princess Hannah. On her outside is Star Finality. Stolo Spirit, the trailer. Past the 5 16 they go. That opening quarter went 24 and 2. Little Sister Lee, Island Living, closest pursuer. Star Finality loops up on the outside. She's Bourbon on Ice, saving ground at the rail. Half 48 and 3. Eighth of a mile from home, new leader. Island Living has the lead, and down the lane they come. Island Living, Little Sister Lee's hanging tough at the rail. On the outside, she's Bourbon on Ice. Island Living, Little Sister Lee, Island Living to win it. Little Sister Lee second. She's Bourbon on Ice third, photo for fourth between Princess Hannah and Star Finality.
On the board, the unofficial winner, number six, Island Living. Number seven, Little Sister Lee, second. Number five, She's Bourbon on Ice, third. Please note there is a photo for fourth, Holdo Superfecta, and Super High Five tickets. While we're waiting for the results of the photo, last call, here's your 50-50 number, 233-55814. In the photo for fourth, please note it's a dead heat for fourth between the three, Star Finality and the four, Princess Hannah. It's six, seven, five, three, four in a dead heat for fourth. So there will be multiple Superfecta payouts and multiple Super High Five payouts. Into the winner's enclosure, the winner of race seven, number six, Island Living. Owned by Randy Lane and Roy Nelson. Trained by Keith Peterson. The winning rider is Kieran Kellawan. Island Living is a three-year-old filly by Finality out of Real Vane. Bred NBC by the Red Rock Farm. Once again, your Superfecta ticket. Superfecta numbers. Your Superfecta numbers will be six, seven, five, with four or three. And same with your super high five, six, seven, five, with four or three. So is official. Six seven exacta was thirty six ten.
The try, 675, was $216. Pick three, return $90. Pick four, $70, 44 cents. 20 cents super, 6753. 2273. 6754. $23. Super high five, six seven five three four thirty two oh six. Late double, five and six, twenty six dollars. Super high five, six seven five four three seventy seven sixty one. Final running time one thirteen and ninety one, one hundreds. That'll wrap up our Saturday card here at Hastings. Don't forget, live racing does continue here tomorrow afternoon. First race will be 2 p.m. Don't forget, there is simulcasting available as well as our gaming floor is open. Thank you for watching and wagering on Hastings Racecourse. Drive safely. See you soon. Good night.
says Hannah. Last of six will be Island Living. Six in, they're at the post. There they go. From the outside, little sister Lee shoots right out for the early lead and opens up by two and a half. Island living on the outside, second by a head. She's bourbon on ice at the rail in third. Then there's two and a half lengths back to Princess Hannah. On the outside, star finality, trailer Stolo Spirit. Into the clubhouse turn they goes ahead to the half mile marker. And it is with the lead, little sister Lee to the back stretch by a length and a half. Island Living second by a tight length. Down on the inside, she's bourbon on ice. Two lengths further back now is Princess Hannah. On her outside is Star Finality. Stolo Spirit, the trailer. Past the 5 16 they go. That opening quarter went 24 and two. Little Sister Lee, Island Living, closest pursuer. Star Finality loops up on the outside. She's bourbon on ice, saving ground at the rail. Half 48 and three, eighth of a mile from home, new leader. Island Living has the lead, and down the lane they come. Island Living, Little Sister Lee's hanging tough at the rail. On the outside, she's bourbon on ice. Island Living, Little Sister Lee, Island Living to win it. Little Sister Lee second. She's bourbon on ice third, photo for fourth between Princess Hannah and Star.